Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to an exciting video. Well, it's an exciting one for me uh, to make this as I've been hard at work for about six months now behind the scenes for intermediate to advanced non-native English speakers, creating some very useful, very, very useful, engaging content that is already helping lots of my students and I will be telling you about it in a bit. But in this video, I'm focusing on some legitimate ways to improve your listening skills and make it as enjoyable as possible and it all links together. So I'm excited for this one. I hope you are. Let's get into it. So I've got five killer podcasts to tell you about with a bonus one at the end, which we could consider to be the best podcast for you of all time. But let's not get carried away with ourselves yet now, shall we? I will be putting the names and links of the podcasts in the description box and timestamps for you to jump to if you wish. But I'm not just going to be listing these podcasts and moving on. I'll also be telling you a bit of pop culture around the hosts, uh, their dialects and or accents, uh, what level of listener you should be to enjoy them, and what the podcasts are about or what they're based on. These podcasts that I'm going to be talking about, bar one, bar one meaning apart from one, are not produced for learners of the language in mind. But as you are an intermediate to advanced learner, you now have the privilege, the privilege of being able to tap into native entertainment. Hallelujah. And of course, I will be exposing you to upper intermediate to advanced expressions during this video with pop-up definitions appearing on the screen. So here we go. My top five podcast recommendations of 2020. Let's do it. Let's do it. You're watching Real, Real English, English with Real Teachers. teachers. Real Teachers. All right, fifth place. Fifth, fifth place. We have Stuff You Should Know, S-Y-S-K. Uh, this is, I would say, this is a staple of the podcast world. Normally, we, we use the word uh, staple in cuisines, like chips are a staple food for the British cuisine. But I'm using it with podcasts. I think you can. I'm pretty sure you can play around with it. So I am. And yes, Stuff You Should Know has been around for a long time. They are probably one of the biggest podcasts. Uh, not the biggest, but very big. And it is hosted by two male American writers. And they choose a topic to research, probably for a couple of days, I imagine. And then they get together and discuss their findings. Uh, the last one I listened to, I think it was all about uh, the differences between uh, whiskey and a bourbon whiskey. And it's given me a better understanding of the basics. It's given me more vocabulary around the topic because even as natives, if you don't study the topic at hand, you don't know how to talk about it. So it's just as important in a non-native language and a native language to further your knowledge to broaden your vocabulary in that topic. And yeah, they, they go over the basics, but also go into detail um, about a, a huge number of topics. So you'll definitely find something that you are interested in. It is an American podcast, so if you are learning British English, then you might prefer one of my next podcast suggestions but you should be exposing yourself to all accents, really. And uh, yeah, these guys, they, they come from different areas of the US. Josh is from Ohio, which is a state in the Midwest of America, and Chuck Chuckers. He, he grew up in the South in Georgia. So from a linguistic point of view, it's quite interesting hearing their differences and as it is two of them, it's a conversation, which is always harder to follow as a listener. So yeah, it might be a good challenge for, I'd say a high-end 
B1 to a midpoint B2 English learner. I've got some harder ones, don't you worry. If, you've, if you are a B2 or even up to C2 learner, I've got you covered, don't you worry. So there we have it, number five, SYSK, stuff you should know, linked in the description box. Coming in at number four is Off Menu with Ed Gamble and James Acaster, who both are bloody, bloody funny British comedians. But to be honest, James Acaster does it for me. He does it for me. This phrase could be, could be interpreted as, uh, he makes me horny. Oh, she does it for me. Whore. But uh, no, he sadly doesn't. I'm meaning his humour makes me laugh uh, the most. And he has some brilliant stand-up on Netflix, but it is quite out there, to say the least. Uh, quite out there, meaning extreme or unusual. So you might not love it, but it's, it's very funny if you do. Anyway, we have two comedians who both love food, and we could therefore say they are foodies. They are foodies. And because of this, they have managed to create almost two years worth of listening practice for you by inviting a celebrity guest on to each episode where they take them to an imaginary restaurant that gives this uh, guest the best dining experience possible. Now, I'm not particularly into talking about food. So I thought I'd get a bit bored of this concept pretty quickly, but being comedians, they managed to take the conversation down some rather random rabbit holes that uh, yeah, you, you couldn't have imagined or predicted. So I keep coming back for more episodes with Off Menu. And relating it to language learning, uh, Ed Gamble, he has a pretty neutral Southern British accent that will hopefully be easier for you to follow as a non-native. And then James Acaster, which I want to be saying a caster because of my accent being similar to Ed Gamble's. But Mr. Acaster is from Kettering, which is not far from where Harry lives, being in Bedford. But he has a different accent to Harry. Harry's is closer to mine, neutral southern accent. And uh, James Acaster is more of a northern accent, more northern sounds in the accent anyway. So again, it's a nice way for you to be exposed to some variation in British accents got a southern and a northern kind of accent. And then they also have a guest on every time who is usually from the UK, uh, sometimes from Ireland, uh, not meaning Northern Ireland, because that's in the UK now, isn't it? But we've also got uh, guests coming in from around the world, from America, from Canada, etc., etc. And actually, uh, because they're new guests constantly, that will give you quite a bit of pop culture because you'll be getting exposure to some of the UK's famous people. Not all of them are massively famous, and so we could say they are C-listers, but it's still good pop culture, I'd say. And being a three-way conversation, and very often all being British, they come out with some great slang that uh, if you're quick enough to, to catch this slang, it will, it will really improve your listening skills. So, there we go. I would rate this one as a B2 to C1, maybe more C1, because they, they can speak pretty quick. So yeah, if you're up for the challenge, the Off Menu podcast is a good one. I'd also love to see you comment your answers to the Off Menu questions below this video. So go and listen to uh, one of the episodes and then give me your answers to the Off Menu podcast. There you go, bit of accountability for you. All right, and uh, if you do that, I will give you a big heart, a big love heart. How about that? Moving on to podcast entry number three, which is going to be described to you in detail after I mention the sponsor of this video. Who is it today? It is Camberley. Cambly have a brilliant way for you to take your English skills to the next level and put all of the real English you learn here on YouTube into practice. And if you haven't heard of them, they are an online language school where you can take one-to-one -one language lessons with native English teachers 
and practice your speaking skills. Yes, and you can also prepare for your exams or even try out their newly designed courses that range from conversational English to business English. And what's more is that they really do live up to their motto, which is to learn English at the touch of a button. And um, it's, it's so true. If you go on the app, you can really connect with a native English speaking teacher within five seconds. It's astonishing. So if you have a last minute moment to practice or you hate booking in advance, some of my students hate booking. So yeah, you should really download Cambly and have them ready to go when you have a moment to have some speaking practice. And the teachers are from all over the world. So that means it's a 24 seven availability. And as you are watching our content, we are able to give you a significant discount if you click the link in the description box and use the code REALTEACHERS10 and uh, you'll get up to 32% discount on their subscriptions, which is really very generous. So if you like the look of that, check out the link in the description box below. Thank you Cambly for sponsoring this video and being able to give you this content and let's carry on. Welcome back. My third recommendation of uh, today's list of podcasts, the great and powerful Joe Rogan, or the Joe Rogan Experience, J-R-E. This is probably not a new one for you if you know about podcasts, considering he quite literally is the biggest podcaster in the world. So very quickly, if you haven't, he is an American comedian, TV personality, and martial arts commentator, expert, enthusiast. And he has very, very long episodes getting deep into conversation with some of the world's most interesting people. Being that he is the biggest podcaster out there, he gets the best names. And as he's very relaxed and down to earth, he often manages to bring out the best in people and gives them an honest attempt at explaining who they are and, and what they do. He's got some very impressive people on there. Not too long ago, I remember him interviewing Bernie Sanders, a guy who has run for presidency multiple times in the US and was given like two to three hours of talk time with Joe Rogan and it, it actually made me interested in, in politics over there. Normally I think it sounds too crazy to be interested in it, but he seemed to have his head screwed on and it seemed like he was a good candidate at the time. But this isn't a political channel, so I will move on swiftly. He's interviewed Edward Snowden, the American whistleblower, uh, when he was employed by the CIA back in 2013. And I think he's uh, still in Russia. He's harboring in Russia. A very interesting guy to listen to. Again, two to three hours with these people is just fascinating because they, they get time to go over the things that most modern journalism never allows for these days. He's also done a couple with Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla Electric Cars, where he got him to smoke weed live on the podcast, which actually in that very moment of him uh, smoking weed managed to make uh, Tesla's shares drop, I think, 9%. So yeah, that was probably the most expensive spliff anyone's had. And if you're anything like me, you'll love the episodes he does with journalists and scientific experts as they really get to the truth of many global problems or inspiring inventions and generally fascinating topics. And the best thing about this podcast for English learners is the sheer length of the episodes. If you can start by aiming to listen to just 20 minutes in one go, just to begin with, and then add on five or 10 minutes to that each time, you'll be building up your endurance. And before you know it, you might be able to listen to two to three hours of native English in one go, which is a fantastic accomplishment in its own right. Next up, we have two documentary style podcast series by 
Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry is an actor, comedian, and writer. He's on a lot of British TV and has done a huge amount of voiceover work over the years because he really does have a way with words, or due to his soothing voice, or maybe because he is rather fantastic at doing characters. Because I grew up listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks, which were read by Stephen Fry. And so I am a big fan of his. And when I heard that he was turning his hand to podcasting, I thought, I better give this a whirl. And oh boy, am I glad I did. His choice of vocabulary is brilliant. And uh, he'll occasionally explain the advanced words with synonyms for the listener's ease, which is great for learners. Um, but I would say his choice of vocabulary is challenging even for native speakers. So yeah, you'll, you'll want to give his episodes a go perhaps after downing a couple of espressos and giving him your undivided attention. His first season is entitled Stephen Fry's Great Leap Years and it's all about the stories behind inventions. It tells the story of how our lives have been transformed by a fascinating, compelling mixture of human decision, and vision, greed, and need. His words, not mine. I told you he's good with them. And then the second series is called Stephen Fry's Seven Deadly Sins. And this one takes a look at the obstacles to our individual happiness and fulfillment. So in summary, if you want an intense 50 minute listening exercise, a shit ton of new C2 plus vocabulary, and to experience Stephen Fry's poetic usage of words, then give him a go. And now we have come to my number one podcast recommendation this year, which is a personal favorite of mine and has been since the start of podcasts. It, uh, it had me in fits of giggles on the bus I took to school every day, um, which is now 16 years ago. God, this recommendation is old. But since then, they have created an animated version out of this podcast, uh, which you can find on YouTube. And this is called The Ricky Gervais Show. And despite the title putting the spotlight on Ricky Gervais, who is one of the biggest names in comedy, largely due to his success with the sitcom called The Office, which you might have heard of. Uh, he is in a recording studio with his co-writer, Stephen Merchant, and their old radio producer, Carl Pilkington. Now, all of them have seen success uh, since this show in their own rights, but uh, the theme of this podcast was kind of like two intelligent guys working together who then invite another guy into the chat who doesn't seem to have picked up a book since his childhood, but he definitely doesn't care how he comes across. And <laughs> just his unique uh, way of looking at the world is often met by Ricky Gervais in hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> which is a domino effect for his listeners, as Gervais probably has one of the most infectious laughs I've ever encountered. But um, yeah, Carl Pilkington, he likes to question everything from the great philosophers of their time to the decision-making of insects. So it's hard to put a genre on their conversations as they go all over the place, but it's, it's first and foremost comedy, for the native listener. However, as we have three British dialects, all of whom are speaking over each other, I'd say we have a pretty good listening exercise for C1 plus English learners. Stephen Merchant is from Bristol, so from the Southwest, or, or what we call the, the West Country, and it's a distinctly unique accent in the UK, one that People associate with farmers, which um, yeah is obviously largely incorrect nowadays. Then Carl Pilkington is a Mancunian. If you can remember what Mancunian means, 
uh, you're either very switched on or you've, uh, you are a dedicated fan because we've been over this on our channel before. A Mancunian is a person from Manchester. It's the adjective or the demonym of a person from Manchester. And then Gervais is from uh, Reading in Berkshire. And he says he grew up in a working class neighborhood um, so I'd say his accent is closer to an estuary English accent than like a traditional RP accent. But again, he, he's from the west side of London, making it a little different to uh, an East London or Essex blend between Cockney and estuary English. I think it's a pretty good one actually for you to get used to because he's not enunciating like an English teacher does, but he's not dropping too many consonant sounds, meaning you might be able to understand him, which will help you with the wider variety of accents, particularly around London, as we do not all sound like me. I am labelled as a posh behind my back, and I'm uh, also being overly animated for this camera, because if you didn't know, normal conversations are incredibly dull to watch on video. Um, in, in Hollywood, I think they always say you've got to have 10 times the energy to come off as if you're uh, being normal or you don't look dead inside. Which is why I think we should applaud the folk from across the pond because they are pretty good at being animated, aren't they? There's a lot of things people can say about those Americans, but they sure can talk to a camera. But yes, the Ricky Gervais show. So there we have it, my five best podcast recommendations for you guys. Remember though, all of these are recorded with natives in mind. So if you are still struggling to understand native conversations, especially with more than two people, then you might want to keep to content that is produced for learners still. Which brings me on to the bonus podcast recommendation that might just be the next best podcast in your pocket. What is it? What is it? I hear you ask. Oh, it is called the British English Podcast, brought to you by yours truly. That means me. This is a podcast for British English learners and enthusiasts. And I go into the culture of our island nation bring you native expressions at an upper intermediate to lower advanced level. And on top of the podcast, I am working my socks off, working very hard on uh, the academy that goes hand in hand with every podcast episode. The reason being, I feel like my students who watch this channel and then have a private class with me, bring these lists of phrases they've, they've noted down from our videos of amazingly real English. But they have little to, to no uh, real confidence in using them themselves. And when they do, the usage is often not correct, um, or the collocations don't sound right, or, or the context is off. So each podcast episode I make has a 10 step lesson associated with it. Each lesson has the key vocabulary explained in full by me, real examples with common collocations, interactive quizzes that I've thought long and hard about uh, to challenge your understanding and, and better it, uh, pronunciation practice files, full transcripts of the podcast to read along with, bonus content from the actual episode and like five or six other things that I won't overload you with now. Just know I've done so much work for this and I really think it will help all of you out there who want to retain real English and feel confident using it straight away. So yeah, the first season is out now. Each season has eight episodes. I have dropped the first four to begin with and then one will be released every two weeks or every fortnight, as us British English speakers say. So if you are interested, then you can either search for the British English podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts, or click the link in the description box, and you will not only get to listen to the podcast, but also a sample lesson of the Academy 
for free. I really hope you enjoy it. I'm excited by this new project as I genuinely think it will help you feel confident in using the English you learn and enhance your awareness of British culture. But if podcasts aren't your thing, then I'm not sure why you're still listening, but I will see you next time on Real English with Real Teachers as usual. Let me know whether you liked this video by giving it a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely day or night. Goodbye. Bye. Bye for now. Sayonara. See you later. Get lost. F off. Oh, so rude. Naughty Charlie.